Hi, I'm Sherry Hobb, author and designer, and I'm going to show you a product called the E3 Etch System. And this is a controller that allows you to electro etch on different types of metal, such as copper, brass, and even sterling silver. It's environmentally friendly, so it's a green product, and I'm going to show you how to etch on a piece of copper so that you can get started. To etch on a piece of copper like this, the first thing you will need is an image and you need to use strong black and white images. And here are a few that I've copied using black toner copier, laser copier, and these are printed on E3 etch laser paper, which works very well to transfer toner to our metal. And it's really nice to have uh, designs with a good balance of black and white. The type of images that you don't want to use are images that have gray scale or gray tones in them. These will not transfer well to your metal. So after you've printed your images using a laser copier, we're going to transfer them to the metal. The first thing that you'll need to do is make sure that you've removed the plastic coating from your copper and make sure you watch out for the sharp edges of the copper. So you peel this off and then you need to prepare your metal by sanding it so that your image, your toner, will adhere to the metal. And I use either 600 or 400 grit wet dry sandpaper. It doesn't really matter which one. And go ahead and sand the surface very well until you have a nice sanded matte finish. And this will help the toner, which we're going to heat set onto the metal to adhere. So sand that really well. And then use a little rubbing alcohol on a Q-tip to clean your metal after you've sanded it thoroughly. And that will help get all of that dust off of there. After you've sanded your metal, you're ready to apply your image. So cut your image out to fit on your square of copper. And I have one here. And then place the image face down on your copper. And then you're going to use a regular household iron to heat the toner onto the metal. And I just use a pillowcase or a press cloth and put it, move this aside, put it over the top of your copper and your paper and then set your iron to a high setting. It doesn't matter how hot it is, it'll, it'll be just fine. And place it directly over the top of your image on your copper and go ahead and put your weight into this and let the heat press that for a good few minutes, letting that heat adhere the toner onto the metal. And so you press it really nicely on there like this. After the metal has cooled, then you can remove the paper. And you want to make sure that you look at this and make sure you have no ripples in the paper. If you do, then you'll want to iron it again to make sure that you've ironed that paper flat. Now on the areas where you don't have an image, you will see the paper buckle a little bit, but that's okay because that's where the paper is and the toner is not. And then to remove the paper, I'm going to soak it in water for about 10 minutes. So just place it in water after it's cool, and that's going to help me remove the paper from the toner on the metal. Let the paper soak until it looks clear like this and you don't see any white left. You'll be able to see that it's a consistent color. And what you will want to do now is roll the paper off of this and keep it soaked. I start with the middle and just use my fingernails to roll this paper off. And if you've adhered the toner properly, you will only see the paper coming away and not the ink. And so just use your fingers to carefully roll this off. You don't need to scratch it. Continue until you've removed all of the paper. And then the part that will etch will be the copper that's shining through and the black toner is going to act as a resist and it, that will not etch wherever the black toner is. After the paper is removed, you'll notice there's a little bit of white residue on here and that's just fine. Those are the paper fibers left behind and it won't affect your etching whatsoever. So these are ready to be etched. To prepare these for etching, you need to tape off the back so that the copper on the back side won't etch away and that only the copper that you want on the front will etch away. So to do this, we're going to tape off the back and just cover half of the back like so. 
and I'm going to leave some of the copper exposed because I have to conduct the electricity on here. I have a piece of aluminum wire here that I've bent with pliers a little bit so that it will have area to conduct and to, to hang on to the copper. And just place that on the exposed part of your copper. And then I'm going to put another piece of tape over this. Place this tape over the aluminum wire and make sure that your aluminum wire has good contact with the copper. And now what we're going to do is just trim the edge here or we can just simply fold it over a little bit here and mask off the edge. After the copper is taped off and the aluminum is attached, I'm ready to etch this. Now the way that this etches is the copper is going to transfer to our pan and I have a stainless steel pan here and you will see that this has copper in the bottom of the pan and the way that it works is the electricity transfers the copper from the copper plate to the bottom of the pan. Be sure you follow all of the safety measures when using copper sulfate. Wear eye protection, protect your skin, and do not ingest and keep it away from children and pets. I've prepared a solution of copper sulfate mixed with distilled water and the granules need to be dissolved in the water and once they are you're ready to etch. Now I have my piece prepared here and I'm using these little foam spacers on the side and I just slide them on like this and this will help suspend and hold my piece above the bottom of the pan so that the copper can plate to the bottom of the stainless steel pan. To etch, attach the black clip to the stainless steel pan and attach the red clip onto your aluminum wire. And then this is ready to place down inside the pan. So you go ahead and put this in. Now you have a setting on here of high or low. If you have a design where there's a lot of copper showing, then you can set it on the high setting and that will etch that away faster. Um, if you have a very small piece, that has very little copper showing, you might want to set it on the low setting. Make sure that the current and power light are on to ensure that the current is flowing for proper etching. This patent and design is special because it samples the voltage to keep it at a constant power level for consistent etching. Leave this to etch for about two to four hours depending on how deep you want your etching to be. And resist the urge to keep checking or you could loosen and lose some of your ink. So leave it in here. And this is safe to touch because it's only 12 volts so it won't hurt you to touch this. And after two to four hours you're ready to take your etching out. So unclip and turn off your power and then you can remove this and rinse this out of the solution. After you've removed your piece from the copper sulfate solution, remove your tape and your aluminum wire and then you can clean off this toner with a little bit of acetone or acetone fingernail polish remover and use a q-tip like this and just rub it over the surface to remove all of that toner. In addition to etching on copper there are a few other types of metal you can etch on using the E3 etch system. This bracelet is a brass bracelet that was etched and instead of using toner as a resist I used a paint pen like this to simply draw the design on the metal. Another thing that you can etch on is copper or bronze metal clay. And this piece is copper metal clay after it's been fired. And again, I used a paint pen as a resist to draw my design on the surface and then etched it in the copper sulfate solution. The nice thing about using copper sulfate to etch with is you don't have a hazardous disposal problem. One thing that you can do is because the copper plates to the bottom of the pan, the copper is not suspended in the solution, so the solution can be used over and over again. And to clean it out from the debris, from the ink and, and the little bits that get in the copper sulfate, I can simply just pour this through a coffee filter and into a jar and strain it. And this way I can save it for later and use it again and again and it will not become exhausted. For more information on etching and where to find products to etch with, visit the following link.